Watch this. Church, R.E.G., summer camp. This is living. This is best friends. This is show me your friends. I'll show you your future. This is the jump, tribal wars, dance parties, prayer, peace, worship. This is having your people, your tribe, your crew. This is going after Jesus unashamedly, wholeheartedly, with everything for he is alive in us and we are never alone. We are young and free. anyone think less of you because you are young but be an example to all this is revival this is real authentic youth Hello and welcome to Youth Online. My name is Rob and it's my beautiful wife, Amanda. Hi, guys. And uh, we're the young adult pastors here at our Hills campus. And man, we're excited for Youth Online tonight. Like, what are you excited about most about tonight? I heard that we have the one, the only Sam Green preaching tonight. Yes. It's going to be incredible. What about you, Rob? Well, shout out to our GWS campus with our Sam Green speaking. It's going to be amazing. Uh, I'm actually really excited for Chat to the Platt where we get people from the chat, some of our incredible people from our youth ministry that get to go on the plat, the platform and share a word in their heart. We have Sagey from the City Campus uh, bringing the word tonight on chat to the plat as well. So I'm excited for a lot of things tonight. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. But uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to go to some praise and worship. So if you're sitting down right now, why don't you grab to your feet, grab to your feet, stand to your feet, and uh, we're going to praise and worship God together. So it's going to be awesome.
We have the incredible honour of praying together tonight yep. and um, a few of you have submitted some prayer requests and we're going to stand with you and believe in faith for what you are believing yeah. for in this season. And so we're going to be praying for those that are dealing with COVID in India during this time. We're praying for those who are believing for finances during this time. Um, we're praying for someone who has a sick mother. Um, we're praying for our senior pastors, pastors Brian and Bobby Houston right now during this season. New South Wales COVID, we've had a few few restrictions put on us over the last 24 hours. So we're going to pray that um, all will be well and it eases and we're going to be praying for good health. So why don't you join with me as we pray. Father, we thank you for the incredible honour and privilege it is to be together tonight, God. And we just pray for every need. God, you know every need, every person and what they're going through right now. Lord, we just commit them to you. And Father, we pray that your hand would be upon those who are affected by COVID. 
Father, their loved ones and their friends, God. We just commit them to you, Lord. We just pray that you would do what only you can do. We pray for those who are believing for financial breakthrough during this season, Lord, that you would be our provider, God. And we pray for overall, God, that your your hand would be upon tonight. God, that you go before us. We pray for Pastors Brian and Bobby Houston, Lord. We thank you for the privilege it is to be part of this church yeah. and to join in even online during this time, Lord. So we commit every detail to you, Lord, and we thank you that you are in control. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I love that we get to do that. That we get to get yeah. to pray for people's um, things that are going on in their lives. We get to stand in prayer together. But I also love that we get to stand in the valleys together. We also get to stand on the mountaintops and praise God for all the things that He's doing. And so we have some incredible praise reports that you guys have submitted that we get to praise God about. Uh, I know someone's praising God. They got a new job Is that this you? week. Uh, you? <laughs> I don't think so just yet. But uh, oh my gosh, uh, someone is praising God for Mother's Day. Yes, Mother's Day. Which is Day. actually Amanda's first or oh no second. Second, second, second Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Uh, someone else is praising God. Their friend got saved on Sunday, Beautiful. which is amazing. So uh, that's so incredible to hear about your friend. And someone else is praising God for use online for this season as well. I think it's pretty, pretty cool. I'm very grateful for use online. Very grateful. Yeah. But uh, right now, uh, we're going to throw over to Sagey David from our city campus here in New South Wales, who's going to share for chat to the plat. So if you're in the chat right now, how about you take out your clapping emojis and let's give it up for Sagey as he brings the chat to the plat word. Over to you. Hey guys, it's Seiji David. I'm from the city campus. Shout out to all of you. Shout out to my RDG. I'm a fuel leader. And if you're looking for a title, the title of this message is Jesus is still the way. And if you can follow me in John 14, 6, um, this is where Thomas kind of asked a question to Jesus on like, God, I just don't know where I'm going. And Jesus answered Thomas and the disciples. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And um, who here loves road trip? If you do love road trip, man, just comment an emoji down there. And I was in a road trip once with my homies and one of my friends, he was like an American driver. And he was like driving the car when I realized we were like in the wrong side of the road. Because um, if you didn't know, Americans, Americans, they like drive their car in the right side of the road instead of the left side of the road. And I quickly realized, I was like, man, we're in the wrong side of the road. And I was like, bro, we gotta get to the other side of the road. And it's like, okay. And then so he steered his wheel straight to the left side of the road. And um, it's just funny how like sometimes we're like Thomas. We're just discouraged. We're just, man, Jesus, I just don't know where I'm going. Or sometimes we're like my American friend. He's like, oh man, I'm in the wrong side of the road. I don't know what I'm doing as well. And so, Sometimes we just need that steer, like back to the left side of the road. And um, it's funny, aren't you thankful that like God is like the God that points us to the right way and He always say the truth. And I love how Jesus said, I am the way. If you feel lost right now, if you feel like you're in the other side of the road, Jesus is calling you out, He's saying, I am the way, I am your truth and I'll give you life, I'm the life. And so I love that. Before I leave, I just wanna ask you a quick question. Are you still on track in your relationship with Jesus? And so, I love you, Youth Online. You guys have fun tonight. Worship is coming up next. Let's go. Amazing. Can we give it up for Seiji in the chat? Bro, you nailed that, man. And I love what you're saying about Thomas. Sometimes we can go through seasons, but we can trust God in the midst of it. But hey, we got some shout outs to people right now. We so do. I want to shout out Mario from Hills Campus. Thanks for joining us, bro. Yes, Who else? Denise, shout out to you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Yes, man. I also want to shout out, man, he's constantly submitting these ones, but Dan Rosterola, shout out to you, bro, for uh, being Dan on Rusty. Youth Online tonight. Shout out to Tyler from Hills. <laughs> Shout out to Caleb from Mexico. <laughs> shout out to Elijah from City Campus. It's good to have you join us tonight. It's awesome. And if you want to be shouted out, why don't you jump in the chat and say, hey, can you shout me out? Or maybe you might have a friend that might dob you in and you might hear it on the other side of this. But hey, we've got some, something very exciting coming up. 
is called Young Leaders Lab. Yep. And uh, our incredible youth pastors, Pete and Laura Toggs, um, set aside time within the year to invest in the leadership of our youth and young adult ministry. And Young Leaders Lab is just such an injection to the life of our youth ministry, especially here in Australia. And so we're going to have a little bit of a promo, a little bit of a teaser of what you can expect. And the best thing about it is that it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can join in online. So check out this video of what to expect with Young Leaders Lab. So good. And uh, man, we love Young Leaders Lab, hey. I'm excited for it. Two weeks away. Two weeks away. The 22nd of May. That's right. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be the best. And um, you can register on the link uh, below in the chat or in the video. It's going to be brilliant. But right now, we are ready for the Word of God. And if you're not... If you've got a journal in front of you already, or maybe you take notes in your iPhone, yep. why don't you grab it out? But uh, let us know in the chat, do you prefer your iPhone taking notes or your exercise book, your journal? I don't know. What about you? iPhone for sure. iPhone for sure. You can just access sure. it whenever you want. You can just, what about you? Uh, I'd go iPhone. iPhone. I'd go Evernote app, you know? It. It's good. But hey, hope you're prepared. Hope you're ready. Hope your spirit's ready because we have the honor and privilege of hearing from our GWS youth and young adult pastor, Sam Green. It's going to be an incredible word. So let's get up for him in the chat. Woo! And uh, Sam, we're expecting what we're about to share. So over to you. Well, hello, youth online. Such an honor to be with you here tonight. My name's Sam. I'm one of our youth pastors in the greater western suburbs of Sydney, along with my wife, Hannah. Such an honor to be speaking to you tonight. Before we get into it, though, I did just want to give a big shout out to Peter and Laura Toggs, our youth pastors. Why don't you show them some love in the chat? Tell them that they're the best. We are so blessed um, to have those guys as our youth pastors. But um, tonight I'm really believing, you know, wherever you are, wherever you're watching, whatever you're doing, whether it's live right now or you're catching up later, whether someone just sent you the link to tonight or you randomly just clicked on it, I'm really believing that wherever you're at or whatever you are going through, that God can meet you exactly where you are at right now. So as I'm about to pray, I'm going to pray that God would speak to you. And that if we could just ask this question to God, is there anything you want to say to me tonight or today or whenever you are watching this, like I said, then he will do exactly that. So why don't you pray with me and then we'll get started. Lord, we thank you so much for every single young person, young adult, whoever is watching right now. Thank you that you love them. You know where they are. You know what's happening in their life. You understand all the situations that are going on, Lord. And I just pray right now that if there is anything that you need to say to us tonight, that you would be able to say it and that we would be able to listen to you. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Why don't you type amen in the chat as well? But let's get into it tonight. I want to start with a question. And the question is, have you ever had anything that you just wanted more of? Let me give you some examples. Let's say food. There's nothing worse than going out for a meal or going over to a friend's house to have a lovely meal, but for whatever reason, there just wasn't enough food to go around and you just needed more. How about sleep? Have you ever needed more sleep? My wife just had, myself and my wife, my wife wife was the one that gave birth to a newborn baby. And I'm in a season where I just wish I had more sleep. Maybe you're in the same boat. Have you ever wanted more money? Have you ever wanted more time to do all the things that you got to do? Have you ever had any kind of success, maybe in a sports team or academically, and you just wanted some more of that? Maybe a little bit more serious. Have you ever felt like you've been in a whole room full of people or watching youth online with a whole bunch of other people, but for whatever reason, you feel a little bit alone and you wish that more people would see you or more people would care about you or you had more attention? On the other side of that, have you ever wished you had something and you wanted less? For example, homework or assignments, or less chores, or less dishes to do. Like I said, uh, I'm, I'm a new dad, so I wish I had less nappies to change. Have you ever wish you had to spend less time at school, or at work, or doing any kind of that stuff? Maybe again more seriously, what about, have you ever wish you had less stress? or felt a little less anxious about things, or maybe there are some things going on in your world, some, some temptations, and you wish that you just felt that temptation a little bit less. Tonight, I'm going to preach to you from my favorite verse, my favorite verse in the whole Bible. And I believe that there are some awesome things to pull out from this because life and big decisions are all about more or less. If you've ever had to make any kind of big decision, the chances are that the actual question was, do you want more of this 
or do you want less with this? If you've been offered a job, do you want to work more or less? If you've been offered something else, is it more or less? Let's read Matthew 6, 31 to 34. My favorite verse, it says this, do not worry saying, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink or what are we going to wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Do you want to know why that's my favorite verse? It's because what it actually means is that all that stuff that we wish we had more or less of or all those different things, God not only knows that you need them, But if you put him at the top of your priority list, he will actually take care of them. Maybe there's some youth leaders watching tonight. I know for me as a youth pastor, I never want actual youth ministry to be more important than me seeking God for myself. And sadly, we see some Christians sometimes where seeking God is not at the very, very top of their list. So it's a very simple message tonight, but I pray that it serves as such a good reminder as to all of us to keep God at the center and to make sure that we are always seeking him first and tonight I'm going to preach the classic three-pointer just your three points and I'm really praying that there's something in here maybe a word maybe a phrase maybe that God's something that God wants to bring out tonight that is actually going to help us all so the first point is this we need more focus and less window shopping more focus and less window shopping let me explain firstly I'll read Hebrews 12:1. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, who is the pioneer and perfecter of our, of our faith. I love the thought of fixing our eyes on Jesus and being focused on him. But what do I mean by window shopping? I'm from the UK and uh, occasionally my wife and I are able to go home to visit my family. And my wife is heaps into fashion. So on that list of stuff that we want more of. She would always say that she wants more clothes. And there are some nice expensive shops in London. If you've ever played Monopoly, I'm talking about Regent Street, Leicester Square, Piccadilly, all those places. There are some fancy shops that my, that my wife loves to go to. So she'll start saving. As soon as we're planning this trip, she'll start saving money. And so that she can, is able to go to these nice shops and buy what she wants in London. And because the shops are so expensive, she'll maybe pick like three or four things that she really, really needs, like a nice pair of jeans, or a winter jacket or just her top priority list. I need those three or four things. And my job is that when I go in with her, I'm kind of like her assistant and I keep her on track because there are so many things. She'll walk in and even though she needs the jeans, you might see like a nice vintage t-shirt that she's got about 50 of or she might see something else. And I'm saying, hey, we didn't come there for that. We came here for the other things. And she says, but I just want to look. You know, I just want to try it on. I just want to see what it looks like. I just want to see what it feels like. And I'm saying, hey, that's all good, but we didn't come to window shop. We came to get the things that you needed. In our lives, young person, young adult, whoever is watching, there are things that we need. And there are always things that are trying to distract us. Things that are trying to catch our eye. Things that we say, hey, I'm not actually going to buy it, but I just want to see what it looks like. I just want to taste it. I just want to do it once. I just want to see it. And all of that comes in. But can I tell you tonight, if you want to seek first his kingdom, we need to focus more on the stuff that we need. Our relationship with Jesus, coming to youth, being a part of an RDG or a connect group, all of that stuff. Whereas the world would say, no, 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 just come and try this once. When in reality, we're going to focus. You know, I heard a preacher once talk about afterpay. And afterpay is dangerous, especially when you're window shopping. Because what afterpay does with that thing that you don't really need is that you don't have to pay for all of it right there and then you just pay for a little bit and then but before we know it we're paying for a little bit more and a little bit more and we ended up getting something that we could actually never afford something that we didn't even need whereas if we just stuck to what we knew was right stuck to the life that we are called to live I believe it's going to save us a lot of hassle down the path so I'm hoping that makes sense and the second one is this we need more truth and less opinions. Now that sounds a little bit controversial. Sam, are you really telling me that I can't have an opinion? That I can't think for myself? That I'm not allowed to work that out? I'm saying quite the opposite. I think in the world that we live in right now, we need more young people than ever to actually do their research, to work out, to talk about how they feel. And I promise you, and I genuinely believe that when young people speak up, the world actually listens. So of course you need an opinion, but I actually believe that there are some things that are not up for discussion. Some things that are biblical truth. Some things that even though hopefully I'm a nice guy, I don't want to hear your opinion on because I believe they're already sorted. I'm talking about firstly your value. 
I don't think anyone is allowed to have an opinion on your value. In the world that we live in, people are trying to increase their value, whether that's money or whether it's they post a certain thing and they get more attention or they get more likes or they get more clicks or they get more comments, any kind of that. And that all of a sudden our value begins, begins to be determined by somebody else's opinion and what they say or what they commented or, or, or how they thought you played in that sports game determines how we feel and how we value. But Jesus already determined that. It's actually truth that you are invaluable. In fact, we all know he obviously sent his one and only son Jesus to die because he knew that you were so worth it. So let's make sure that our value is not based on other opinions, but it's based on truth. How about your calling? I don't know if you've ever been like me, there have been times where maybe I've made a mistake or I've done something where I felt, oh no, I don't know if God can use me anymore. I don't know if I'm really called to that now. I don't know if I can continue to do this. And all of a sudden I'm letting other people speak into that like, yeah, 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 you did that. So now you can't do that. And you're like this, so you can't keep serving God. But can I tell a young person that your calling's not up for discussion? It's not up to somebody else's opinion. The last time I checked, God said that he knows the plans that he has for you and they're good plans and they're plans to prosper you. There are some things in our life that even though other people may have an opinion, they're actually truth and they are not up for discussion. And the last point is this, point number three, we need more daily bread and we need less cheap meals. More daily bread and less cheap meals. Let me read you this story from Exodus 16. It says this, verse 15 to 20, When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they didn't know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord's commanded. Everyone's to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered a lot and some gathered a little. And when they measured it, the one who gathered much, they didn't have too much. And the one who gathered little, they did not have too much too little. Everyone gathered just as much as they needed. Now listen to this part. Verse 19, Moses said to them, no one is to keep any of it until the morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning. This part is yuck, but it was full of maggots and it began to smell. Moses was angry with them. What on earth does that actually mean? I like to believe it means that these Israelites who are wandering through the desert with no McDonald's, no KFC, no cheat meals, God said, hey, I'm going to give you as much as you need every single day, but you're going to have to trust me. Don't take too much because there's going to be some fresh manna for you in the morning. But how about the cheat meals? I love a good cheat meal. Maybe you're you're into fitness and you're on a diet or you're trying to work something out and there's all these cheat meals. I love a good cheat meal. Don't get me wrong. And I actually think a cheat meal is okay. But let me explain in our relationship with God what I think a cheat meal could be. Have you ever been to a summer camp or a summer fest where you walk into that big top tent and you didn't even do anything? I don't know how you were in your relationship with God. You might have not been in the best place, but when you walk into that tent, there is just something so tangible about God's presence because there's already a team that's fired up to to lead you in worship. There's already leaders who are leading. It's kind of like cheating in a way. We just rocked up. And the presence of God was already there. How about youth on a Friday night? Even as you're watching right now, the team has labored over tonight. People have worshipped and prayed for you tonight. We prayed even before this moment right here, believing that God was going to speak to young people. And you come and someone hopefully delivers a message that is kind of helpful. It's kind of like cheating in a way because you just clicked on a link. Maybe you've never been to youth on a Friday night or, or you've ever been to a summer camp. Maybe you've just put on a worship song that allows you just to take your focus off what's going on and and onto that song and those songs, people have prayed about those songs, they've thought about the lyrics, they've sung it in such a powerful way that would allow us to do that. It's kind of like cheating in the way. Now there's nothing wrong with a cheat meal. Cheat meals are awesome. And I think sometimes that we really, really need them and we need help. But when it comes to our daily bread, I never wanna be someone who's just living cheat meal to cheat meal, Friday night to Friday night where what God is speaking to me about today is what he said to me yesterday. I want to have my daily bread. If you can take nothing away from this message, young person, except for this, let me take you back to Matthew 6, where he says, seek first the kingdom and all those other things, the stuff that we want more of, the stuff that we want less of, the stuff that gives us joy, the stuff that stresses us out, all all, all of that stuff, God would take care of it if we would seek him first, if we would get our daily 
bread, if we would be able to have moments every single day where we can pray that prayer that we prayed at the very start of this message where we said, God, do you have anything to say to me? And that we would give him time where we could listen, maybe open his word, maybe listen to worship music, whatever works for you. I know I want to be a part of raising up and be a part of a generation that doesn't live cheat meal to cheat meal. That's not trying to work out whether I need more of this or less of this, but my one goal in my life above everything else would be every single day to have God at the top of my list as today, I'm going to seek him first. You know, I'm not sure where you're at with your relationship with God. I'm not sure if you're in a season where you're killing it every single day or you're in a season where you're finding it hard to pick up your Bible. Anyway, all of that being said, today is a new day. Tonight is a brand new night. Whenever you're watching this, you have the opportunity to seek his kingdom first right now. So I encourage you, reach out if you need some help. Type in the chat, hey, I'll... I'm going to try and start my getting my daily bread. I'm going to start right after this, man. We'd love to encourage you, but I also want to pray for a very special group of people tonight. And like I said at the start, I don't know how you came to be watching Youth Online. Maybe you just were surfing YouTube or, or, or the internet and this just randomly popped up and you clicked on it and for whatever reason you hung around and you're here at this part of the service or maybe a friend sent you the link. Maybe you tune in every single Friday night. Maybe you used to go to a church and this just came and you're just watching. I don't know, but I do know that God knows exactly. He knows who you are. He knows every single detail. He knows everything that you're going through. He cares about you and he loves you so much. So maybe you're thinking, oh, I'd love to have this daily bread that you're talking about. I'd love to encounter Jesus, but I actually don't have a relationship with him. Well, I would love to just have the absolute honor in leading you in a prayer that would invite Jesus into our heart to start or maybe even restart a relationship with you. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to say a line of a prayer. And if it's okay where you are, maybe you're by yourself or somewhere private and you can say this out loud. That's awesome. If not, you can just actually say this in your heart and God will still hear it. I'll just say a line. You just pray it right back and repeat after me. And then when we say amen, we're going to give you a huge congratulations and say that you're awesome. So pray this after me. Say, dear Jesus, I thank you right now for your love and your grace. From this moment on, I'm going to live for you. I declare in my heart and I confess from my mouth that Jesus, you are Lord. In Jesus name. Amen and amen and amen. Congratulations. That is the best decision that you could ever make. If we could just light up the chat right now to say these guys, congratulations. And Youth Online, you are absolutely incredible. It's always such an honor uh, to be able to speak to you guys. And I didn't take it lightly. So I really pray that it was God breathed and that there was something in there that is uh, perfect for you and helps you out in this season. Love you so much. See you soon and God bless. Incredible. What a word from Sammy G. How about in the chat? Why do you really want to give it up for Sam as he um, brought such a powerful word this evening? And I just want to encourage you right now, if you might be watching this all around the world, and maybe you really felt compelled to really pray that prayer Sam was praying today, I'd encourage you in the chat, right? I prayed that prayer. And simply what we can do is our team can get in touch with you and get you started on what that looks like of now being a Christian, which is amazing. So congratulations for those who accepted Jesus. And what I love about Youth Online is it's every week. Yeah. So the best thing about Youth Online is next week you can join in just again, same time, same place, or you can watch it later at a time zone that suits you. But I love Youth Online every week and it's on next week as well. It is. Well, we're going to pray yep. in the night. What an incredible night. Youth Online, we love you. Let's pray. We're going to head out. Father, thank you for an incredible night that we got to meet together and be together. Lord, I thank you for being under your word. And Lord, I thank you that you spoke to people tonight. I thank you that you've... um deposited a word in the season for yep. them, Lord. And we just pray that we, we would continue to go from strength to strength in this season, Lord. We love you. We thank you for it. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen, Amen. amen. We love you, Youth Online. Over to you, praise and worship. Right, I want to see everybody's hands in the air.
said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life, to me, will find it.